can't be one dimensional. And that's what he was getting at. Now, here's what I disagree with, with Kirk Cousins. And this is where I think Kirk Cousins gets himself in trouble. Kirk Cousins went out there uh, and, and basically put out an apology to Adam Thielen. He could have pulled him to the side. They could have had a conversation behind closed doors and he could have told him, hey, Man, my bad. I miss you on that read. You're right. Everything you're saying, boom, boom, boom. I went back. I looked at the tape. That's no problem. I have no problem. But publicly saying that, to me, I don't think he owes Adam Thielen uh, uh, um, an apology. And here's why. I know people are going to be like, what? Are you serious? Have you seen how Kirk Cousins has played? Yes, I have seen how he has played. But you cannot tell me that these four games that Adam Thielen was running every route that he needed to be running. Adam Thielen was reading everything that he was supposed to be reading. Stephon Diggs, Dalvin Cook, the defense, the uh, coach, anybody else. Is, all I'm saying is, is that, yes, you're the quarterback. You're going to get all the credit. You're going to get all the blame. That's fine. That comes with the territory. You know you signed up for it. But apologizing publicly for missing a read, I don't think that's necessary. I I think that leaves it for it to linger. I think that leaves it for uh, that wound to be opened back up down the road. If something comes out about the the offense again, then we're going to be looking at, is he going to be apologizing again? Who fault is it? All this stuff. So I don't think that, it, you know, he needs to do that. And also being the quarterback, you know, you, you kind of you, you got to kind of, you know, have a certain like, look, we're not going out on this route. That's not what we're going to be about. We're going to fix it and then we're going to move on. All that apologizing and all that stuff ain't going to happen in public. So maybe that is, the, you know, the, the problem that the Vikings are having. But Kirk Cousins, he is there uh, for another year. They got another year to try and figure it out, and he needs to be better. I'm not absolving him from any of the blame because he has been part of the problem. But he he's not the only problem, is what I want to say. But they do got they do have to get that passing game together. That's going to help out a guy in Dalvin Cook. That's going to help a guy in Dalvin Cook also stay healthy during the season because we know he has had issues with uh, remaining healthy with injuries. So. Kirk Cousins, fix the passing game, just not against my Lions, and then we'll be all right. Now, where I'm not all right is going into the second uh, team, and that is right here in the city of Atlanta. And the Atlanta Falcons sit right now one and three, just like they did last year, and they sit at the bottom of the NFC South. And let me well, let me just check the standards to make sure that I, that I'm telling you correctly because I'm pretty sure that they are. But yes, they sit at the bottom of the uh, NFC South at one and three uh, because Panthers, but uh, Panthers, Bucks are both two and two, and the New Orleans Saints uh, are three and one. So he, here's what I'm going to say, you know, about uh, the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not going to be one of these Falcons fans that go on, you know, the. Uh, uh, you know, a a, a vent mode or anything like that. Trust me, I already did it over the weekend. So you don't have to worry about that. But it is a problem for you to have the offense that you have. And you have to, and you start out again at one and three. I don't have the answers. I'm going to tell you that right now. I know people are maybe thinking like, hey, well, he's going to say something. He's going to get to the answer. I don't have the answer. And here's why. People have brought up multiple things. And Vince, right, I see your comment in the uh, wait a minute show chat room. I'm going to get I'm going to get to that in just a moment. People have had multiple questions about the Falcons and, and we still do not have the answer. It was the question that they, they asked Dan Quinn uh, recently, I think today or yesterday, asking about job security and, with, you know, about making a change at offensive coordinator. Why? Why? What, what, what would that do? That hasn't solved anything. If you remember, the offensive coordinator is Doug, uh, uh, Dirk Cutter right now. 
last year, I it was what Sarkeesian, then then we you know before that Shanahan, and then Dirk Cutter was there before. So I mean, you you've been through uh, a series of, and I think even Raheem Morris, he he was not the offensive coordinator, but he was a defensive guy, and they got him working on the offensive side of the ball. So, I mean, you had these coaches that you've had and that you have, you know, uh, exchanged out and you still continue to have the same problem. Defense. Now, Dan Quinn is, is taking over the defense and you're thinking like, well, OK, this is his specialty. Look at the Seattle Seahawks and what he did with this team. And, you know, it's been mirrored to be somewhat like the Seattle Seahawks defense. They're still having problems. They're still not able uh, to slow that, uh, the to stop the run. They're still not able to um, uh, um, prevent big passes. I think right now teams are are converting over fifty percent, fifty one percent. I think exactly on third down on the Falcons. That has been a problem for the Falcons for years to get off the field on third down, and that continues. So. That's I'm not here to rant and rave. I'm just pointing out the facts is that this is a problem. We haven't even got into the Matt Ryan thing. And I know Falcons fans, they are tired of Matt Ryan uh, as well. Trust me. I understand what you're, you're getting at is that he has made some mistakes that are very, very similar to things that he's done in the past. And it seems like he continues to do it. But the guy still does actually get you back in the game keep you in the game but also he does put you out of the game so that he has to get you back uh into the game so it is a it is a love hate relationship you know with matt ryan uh the running game it it is non-existent Devontae freeman i don't know if Devontae freeman is fully back from this injury or is it that he's just taking us a step back from what he originally was and there's no guy, there's no Tevin Coleman there, even though Tevin Coleman probably would have been, you know, injured uh, at this point. That's not a knock. That's just the truth with Tevin Coleman is that he gets injured. You, so you got Edo Smith, you got Brian Hill. You haven't even used Brian Hill. So uh, and then you got Julio, Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu. Uh, you got this line that you uh, drafted or uh, go along with Alex Mack, Jack, uh, Jake Matthews. And now Austin Hooper uh, seems like, you know, he's the go to guy, which you would think think that it is Julio. So there's a lot of pieces moving around uh, with this team. And, and there's a lot of question marks uh, that are remaining question marks. And that is the problem is that there those questions aren't being completely answered. Defense, I'm not even going to get on the defense, uh, but they have their problems as well. Some of it is during injury, but there's some guys that they drafted that has not panned out that they thought, you know, would pan out. So with this team, are they underperforming? Yes, very much so. They are, are underperforming. They need something. And that's the problem. I have no idea what it is. And I don't know if the Falcons know what it is. Is it changing and getting a new coach? Could be. I don't know. Because, again, this was the same story we were having with Mike Smith. Mike Smith is the all-time winning this coach for the Atlanta Falcons. And they wanted him gone. They got rid of him. They bring in Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn almost wins them a Super Bowl. Everyone, you know, is, is looking uh, on the bright side of things, of what's going to come after this whole debacle in the Super Bowl. And it has not transpired that way. They are a 500 ball club since the Super Bowl. A 500 ball club with the talent that you have on that roster. Something's got to change. Something's got to go. Something's got to, to, to click what it is. I have no idea because it seems like they try different things and it seems like it's going to work. Then it doesn't work. and They go with something else, but it's going to have to be dramatic. And I, I will just say this, too. I understand like their their defense is built off of, you know, speed and agility and, you know, guys flying all around. You got to get yourself that someone that can just get to the quarterback regardless i don't know you do all that you have all those you know power rangers moves and 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 flying all over the place in the background uh with the with the pyro effect with the you know the the uh fireworks whatever you got going on 
But make sure it's going on behind a pure edge rusher that can get to the quarterback. I think that if I, if that was one thing I was going to say, that's where it needs to start. Because depending on Grady Jarrett, as good as Grady Jarrett is, and as much as I love Grady Jarrett, because he is, did things the right way, he got drafted in the fifth or sixth round or something like that, and he went in there, he played his part, and then he, he made himself into one of the uh, the best D tackles out there. It's not going to get done with Grady Jarrett. You got to get yourself an edge rusher. You got the you got the wide receivers. You may have to you got to invest in another big back, another back just in general. But something has to change because Falcon fans at this point they are very very frustrated. We got a video out here that went viral of a guy going off on a team in the in the tunnel during halftime. We got another video of a guy. Basically telling Arthur Blank, it, it, you know, not basically, he was. He said it's time for Quinn to go. This is not acceptable for for the roster that you have. And what and, and and the reason I say that, and I'll and I'll say this last, and then I'll move off of it. But for the roster that you have, you can't tell me that the wide receiver. Uh, uh, tandem or wide receiver group the Panthers have is better than the Falcons. Now, you can say the running game, uh, Christian McCaffrey is better than than uh, Devontae Freeman, but then you have a guy in Kyle Allen that comes in uh, and, and get this team to 2-2. Two and two. That's a problem. Tampa Bay, they had their problems. We don't know who the running back is, is going to be. Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce Arians said they're going to ride the hot hand. Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber, I, I don't know. Now, they are nice with Godwin and, and, and Mike Evans. Don't get me wrong. But Jameis has been the turnover guy that everyone has talked about. Still got them at 500 right now. And then they put up points on the L.A. Rams. And I don't even want to get started on the New Orleans Saints. They lose Drew Brees and they still win three uh, three games. People were thinking they were, they were lucky to go 500 without Drew Brees. And now they could actually only lose one, maybe two games while Drew Brees is out. So I don't want to hear, you know, uh, you know, all this other stuff. There's nothing to be said. It, it has to be fixed because Falcon fans, they're losing their mind and they're going to lose their mind if it's not fixed. You got all this offense and you're averaging like 17 points per game. That's not going to get it. That's not going to cut it, especially in this division. That's what it is. So I'm going to get off that. Let me go to the wait a minute show chat room uh, and read some of your comments. Uh, Vince Wright said, Jelani, you're not a Lions fan? As a question, of course I am a Lions fan. Vince Wright, don't get it twisted. The Lions is my number one team. I will always root for the number one team, but this is my home away from home team. So and the reason I'm talking about the Falcons right now is because they're the ones that have a problem. Now, my Lions... Uh, we thought they were going to be a problem last week. I was just talking about whether they was real or Fugazi. And I said that they were going to be real and they played in a, a pretty good game, uh, which is still unacceptable because y- you made mistakes that you should not have made. And you had Kansas city right where you wanted them. And, and the lions, unfortunately were the lions carry on Johnson. I don't care the the video. Did he fumble or did, he didn't fumble? To me, he looked like he fumbled on it. But I, I'm looking at before the fumble. It's first down and goal. There is no reason for Carryon Johnson to be reaching out over the goal line on first and goal with eight to ninety five people around him. At the, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason for that you don't get in you got three more downs you at least got two to get in there and you have been moving the ball the entire time on Kansas City defense their defense is not the Chicago Bears their defense is not the New England Patriots their defense is not the Buffalo Bills they are the Kansas City Chiefs defense 
Those are the those are the things that that hurt me, you know, about it. So yes, Vince, right? I am a Lions fan. I am uh, paying attention. I am watching, and I am rooting on. Man, this guy Kenny Galladay. I told people when he was a rookie. I said he is nowhere near, and I am not going to put him in the stratosphere with Megatron. But I said you need to watch out for a guy in Kenny uh, Kenny Galladay. The guy can play, and he showed in that game. 